Welcome back to Dark Souls 2 Lore Through. Um, we just made it to, well, we made it to the Lost Bastille, and then we made it to No Man's Wharf. Uh, I guess I should have checked whether we needed a certain level to talk to Karelian, but of course, he might not be in No Man's Wharf. I don't know anything. So we're just going to go at No Man's Wharf and continue on that way. So there's a ship out here. It's called Wharf. There's not a person there anymore. I somehow got hit by that even though I... Here, oh, there he is. Okay. Oh, he actually fired straight on. Um, okay, let's go this way. There's a lot of light here, and I don't have a Pharos Lockstone. What? Where'd that guy come from? Must have been hanging off the edge. Who is this? Bradley of the Old Guard. Shh, sure. Let's do it. There's a dog over there. Wow. I don't know any of this stuff. Come on, Bradley of the Old Guard. I got 17 life gems. What do you think? Let's fight this dog. Okay. Don't knock me off. I feel like I don't know this game anymore. Titanite shard, it's good, because we're going to want to upgrade a couple different weapons. Okay. Wow. Bradley of the Old Guard, save me! That guy used to be over here. Okay, thank you, Bradley of the Old Guard. What old guard are you of? Okay. I'm scared. Large soul of lost undead. Wish I had a Pharaoh's Lockstone. Is this a proper shortcut now? It looks like it. That it that had to have been cut content from the original. There's not a guy that jumps down, but there are multiple guys here. Bradley of the old guard. Oh, there's a... <laughs> he jumps down, though. Okay. Thank you. I could have used that earlier. This is like a guy from the undead crypt. Oh, is he like our torch bro? Don't... Yeah, he probably would have followed us around, like in the undead crypt. Throwing knife. Don't think we've come. I mean, we have iron arrows, but I don't want dark pine arrows. Do we have anything new? Why is like the dark sign like here in the item list? Like, why is it in the middle? It's so weird. Okay. Hexed Pine Resin applies Dark Flame to right hand weapon. The effective weapon inflicts dark damage for a short time. Okay. That's it. Come on, Bradley of the Old Guard. 
a guard who is at full health and uh, doesn't seem, seem to have any problems. Um, yeah. Is there anything in there? cover myself in a while I did thank you Bradley of the old guard well that started on fire because of me oh so you're super overpowered, but you only... You're only here for five seconds, gotcha. Do I have one? I do, somehow. Oh, I found one on the thing. Okay, great. 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 Small, smooth, silky stone and a large soul of a proud warrior. Great. I love this. We're doing this great. Bradley, um, can I summon you again? Come on, Bradley. Come back to me. I already have half my durability on my sword. So, in the old, in the original game, there was these enemies that, um, we're afraid of light, and that's why... Ooh, look at this. And that's why you would, uh... Use the Pharaoh's Lockstone, so that you could, uh... Get them to not chase you. Oh! Lucatil. I see. Huh. Okay. Talk to me, Lucatil. I want to hear, is it the same speech, or do you have a whole different storyline? What is it? I don't know you, and you don't know me. Things are better that way. Okay. <sighs> you are an odd one. Normally, people keep a safe distance when they see this mask. But you... I'm called Lucatil. From the land of Mira to the far east, Mira. across the mountains. They say Drang Lake brims with powerful souls. And so I came to claim my share. But what a strange place. Even the rumors did not prepare me. You are an odd one indeed. I've always made a point of avoiding people. While you've made a point of engaging me. I can see that you are mid-journey. If you require assistance, I will help you. I come from Mira, a land of knights. What? My sword is always ready. Don't hesitate to call upon me. Whatever happens, I won't be missed. <laughs> yeah, Mira definitely is a it's a warring country or a fighting country, which we'll learn about more. But um, yeah, Lugatil probably my favorite character in this game. You are an odd one. I come from. Don't hesitate. Great. Uh, yeah, I will summon you later, Lugatil. Okay, I need help, Lugatil. I need help. Help me. Help me, Lugatil.
used to be a guy there. Oh yeah, those are... I can see those enemies up there. Is there a new, like, if there's new hidden, hidden rooms, I swear that's, I'm not going to find those. Probably not going to look. Alright. So, we can go this way. Oh, the fire goes out. That's interesting. Um, wow. Wow. Wow, they're shooting fire arrows at me, and then someone's throwing, oops, someone's throwing uh, jars of oil on me, so that's not good. Alright, well... This is all about Rangy and leggings. Leggings worn by Varangians that terrorized nearby seas. The coastline stretches far in northern Drang Lake. Beyond this northern sea is an unexplored continent said to be the home of things inhuman. Are we going to do this already? All right. Ran right into it. All right. But because we've turned on this light, these guys are scared. Okay. Varangian. What? Where did I get hit from? Um, okay, so we wanted to go up here in the past, but I don't know about now. So I don't know what these things are. Maybe the the things they spoke about in the um, in that description, where there's things in human. Can you backstab these guys? Yeah. Life gem drop. Tattered cloth robe. There's still one more up there. Robe favored by pyromancers. It appeared tattered, but in fact, its fabric is reinforced with pyromancy. Magic is no show. It is an art that allows mere mortals to glimpse into the very fabric of what is and may be. Pyromancers are very serious about their art. They've always been. It's always an apprentice based, I was going to say sport, but, but 
you know what I mean. You give a piece of yourself to the... Oops. It's not meant for joking around. Okay. There's an NPC here, normally. Um, one of these is trapped. Silver Talisman. Hmm. So, Silver Talisman in Dark Souls 1 was a thing that repelled dark. In this game, blend into the environment. So it's it's like the chameleon um, sorcery. A tiny charm embedded with imitative magic used to transform into something and blend in. Use this talisman to hide from invaders. Only provides the most superficial camouflage, but sometimes that is enough to do the trick. Okay. <clears throat> this was a great sword. Okay. A straight sword with a very long blade, one of the few ultra great swords. No human was intended to wield a sword of this weight or destructiveness. Only a few famed warriors have ever wielded this great blade for its challenges the very limits of human ability. Well, I think this is a, a reference directly to um, what's that manga? Berserk, which a lot of Dark Souls is based on, and uh, the main character, god I can't remember his name, I only saw a few episodes, <laughs> wielded a sword very similar to that. Well it also looks like Cloud Strife's sword from Final Fantasy too. Emit Force, right here. I don't know why. Okay. A miracle derived from force emits a forward moving shockwave. Throughout history, there have been many examples of imitative miracles. When discerning original from imitator is n it's nigh impossible, nigh on impossible, which is hard, which is which hardly matters. I, anyway. Um, all right. So we want to go here. Oh, Kavalon's here. What the f this is so weird. I mean like why why was that change made? I guess it's a little easier to find him here, but I don't know, it's like random in my opinion. Don't fall off, please. Wow. Okay, fell off. Uh, okay. But we can go up here, which I didn't originally do. And I guess that's where this guy went to go. If that were a mimic, who knew? Oh my god, okay. So this is brigand stuff. Three times a charm. It'll take me a while to get into uh, when to parry. All right. Bandit axe. An axe of bandits. <coughs> an axe of bandits of the ferocious outskirts. Very sturdy build for the armament of a bandit. 
When Ferosa fell to war, its citizens were left landless and entirely to their own devices. Many were reduced to thievery, while Ferosa knights scattered to other lands as sellswords. Ferosa is a big story element of this game, and uh, you know we'll learn more about them, but just Ferosa, remember it. <laughs> Mountains surround Drang Lake on three sides. Most travelers who try to cross them end up hapless prey to the countless brigands lurking there. <laughs> Very similar. Okay. We're all good. Is there any secrets? What? One hit. One hit did that. That, like, goes against the code. <laughs> Alright. Maybe it's a certain amount of damage. I don't know. Who are you? I, Gavlan. Gavlan will, Gavlan deal. Gavlan wants soul. Many, many soul. <laughs> I don't know how he what laughs. you want? I don't know how he laughs while drinking. With Gavlan, you will, you deal. <laughs> I feel like Gavlan was the attempt that the writers of this game made for a meme or similar. Goblin wheel, goblin deal. I don't know. It's not doing it for me. Lonesome goblin. Well, he's a Gurm warrior. Uh, we'll learn more about Gurm warriors when we get to them. I don't know why he's in the uh, No Man's Wharf. But we can sell our items to him. Which is nice. It's a good way to, like, whatever. I think for now, I mean, I guess we'll sell duplicates maybe to, you know. Get a few extra souls for things, but uh, I think we're good. I'll probably do this off screen if I need to really get rid of or go through stuff. <laughs> I like how he gives you 10 souls for souls, but he gives us 10 for rubbish. I'll take it. All right. Um, he doesn't have anything to say. Gavlan will, Gavlan deal. Gavlan wants soul. Okay. Many, many souls. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you want. Okay. With Gavlan, you will. Yep. Nothing. Gavlan, we. No lore. With nothing. Gavlan. I'm already annoyed. Okay. So he sent, sells the Ring of Giants. The beloved ring of the gallant Shieldless Lothian, formerly of Ferosa, increases poise. Lothian was born a peasant and died a general. His determination and diligence were unmatched, especially on the battlefield, where he earned his name by choosing to fight without a shield. We'll hear a lot about Lothian. Um, I don't know if he's that impactful on the story, but we'll certainly learn about him. But um, he was from Ferosa, formerly, uh, meaning he left, meaning he might not have fought for Ferosa. But Lothian... Shieldless Lothian who needs poise will learn about him. Good place to get poison arrows? Don't need them right now. Then we get poison moss, poison throwing knives, and rotten pine rotten pine resin. A faintly poisonous clump of moss. When ingested it counteracts poison. If enough poison builds up in the body to break out and cause poisoning, your HP will start to decrease. If you okay. I don't need to be told that. Um this is just poison stuff. Okay, I'm leaving. Gavlan, we, what, Hit the wrong one. With Gavlan. Okay, Lonesome many Goblin. Deal, many okay, so... 
There was a thing here. Of course, this is going to be a guy. Don't know how that was a backstab. Here. Must be the low, lowest. Here. It's like, you know, you got weird memories, like weird things, like you're like, something's here. I'm not even going to hit this one. This wasn't a mimic, and it shouldn't be. Firebomb, I don't need those. This is, this is an SS West shard. This is, um, large tight end shard. Well, I can use that. Uh, yeah, we need to go back up. I forgot. Excuse me, got one. Um, I get, oh yeah, we can go here without getting hurt. I forgot to ring the bell, which you can only do from like about on the top. I get so excited about the uh, shortcut that I I hate that you can't ragdoll with any of these guys. They bring that back in Dark Souls 3. There's something nice about clearing out an area very thoroughly and just being like, just walking around in it. So yeah, the <clears throat> Ferris Lockstone lit that thing. I guess I should, you know, be looking around and showing this. Um, but what what is the purpose of this No Man's Wharf? It's interesting. We're almost out of durability here. Um, probably use a repair powder before we. Oh, two guys, huh? These guys disappear, which might have meant something in Dark Souls 1, but it certainly doesn't mean anything here. There's a bell up there. Uh, interesting fact, you can hit this bell with something. Like, you can ring the bell without pulling this lever, which is a good touch. I'm glad they did that. No cutscene. Interesting. So, we're going to learn a little bit about No Man's Wharf, um, but obviously there's a thing where there's this ship, and it's powered on souls or something, souls light up, but when something's ready or whatever, we ring this bell, and the ship comes. I hope that doesn't turn it off <laughs> and make it go away. I doubt it. Okay, life gem and a homeward bone. We know those. One of these boys. Okay. Well, that was uh, not my intention. All right. What is going through this speedy style like? If you run, you'll probably get hit by that. Yep. There's a dog, which makes it okay. There is an actual shortcut. It looks like though. That's super cool. I like that a lot. Oops. That used to be lit, by the way, that torch. Ooh, that Varangian is doing something weird. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess we're... We might not be totally clearing it out by going this way. I don't know if we can go up. 
Oh yeah, I guess we can. <gasps> cool! So these guys only used to appear in uh, the boss room during... during New Game Plus. Oh! Whoa! Okay. What? <laughs> oh, man. I guess I'm, uh, I'm just running into the fray here. Okay. Good job. That hit the pole. Oh, gosh. I guess I gotta open up this shortcut and just stop with this nonsense here. Oh, wow. This is scary. Oh, there's a guy there? I never even saw that guy. Oh, so I lost all my souls, too. Uh, I didn't even think about that. Alright. Okay, well, there's a bunch of guys here, and I don't know what to do. Yeah, he falls down. Ooh. He's, uh, these aren't mannequins. What are they called? I can't remember. Now, why was there a guy here last time? I feel cheated. still need to investigate around here. Man. I have 14 effigies. <laughs> um, okay. <sighs> okay, let's try not to die here. Oh yeah, this is where I want to be. Is there poison? Or they, uh... I don't know what they are. Ferengi and Sword, nice. We'll close that for now. Um, alright, so let us put on... Do we have enough? We have some of these. Okay. Throwing knife and flame butterfly. <clears throat> Bottle filled with dried red butterflies. Stimulation of these rare butterflies creates a small flame, allowing torches to be lit on the go. These butterflies exude secretions which ignite upon exposure to air, protecting them from natural predators, known and loved as handy fire lighters, but feared as the catalysts of disastrous fires when found in swarms. <laughs> I love how they add little bits to each thing. Just trying to see if there's anything new. This was Nestus Fleshard. Fragrant Branch of Yor. A fragrant? Oh yeah, we are a... Huh. Do we use one of these? Nice. Uh, this must be the SS Flash Shard. Oh! Royal Soldier's Ring. That's a pretty decent ring, actually. Uh, I can replace this. Increases maximum load. These rings were granted to warriors of who distinguished themselves in the service of King Vendrick. The king favored simple warriors who staked their every battle on strength alone. Increases the load that can be carried. 
<laughs> sure. Horse speed is always good. Vendor command. He rewarded those that were most uh, loyal to him. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Oops. Oh, cool. They can't come out here. All those people shooting me. Oops. Okay. It's interesting they dropped the stuff of pyromancers. I don't know if that's like every time or if there's like chances. Oop. There's a. Uh, what are they called? It's not. I was gonna say mannequin. But those are from... Okay, get out of here. I don't like that guy shooting me up there. quick. Human effigy and a life gem. Don't. Oh, we didn't read Varangian Sword. I don't believe. Straight sword wielded by a Varangian and engraved with a skull. A former king launched a campaign to capture these terrors of the high seas, but rather than imprison them, forced them into hard labor at no man's wharf. The king, racked with fear and suspicion, began to see the progenitor of the curse in anything and everything. During his reign, sorcerers in particular suffered dreadful persecution. So yeah, we start to see the story of the previous king to the area that is now known as Drang Lake. Uh, that all starts here at No Man's Wharf. Okay, Carillion is still over there. Oh, this is so nice. Thank you. Oh, don't die, please. Okay. Please have enough intelligence. Oh my god, there's a guy just hanging off there. Oh my god. Okay, Carillion, what do you gotta say? Hmm. I sense power. Very well. Good. From this day, you shall be my new pupil. I am Carillion, Carillion of the Fold. Surely you've heard the name. I... Now, now, do not be afraid. Let us explore the limits of sorcery. Uh, I do know your name, but maybe not for the reason that you think I do. So, he does pyromancy, it looks like. But he also has some items. Sorcerer Staff. Spell Quartz Ring. A ring bestowed upon students of a certain standard at the Melfian Magic Academy. Pyromancer Glocken crafts these replicas, much to the dismay of the conservative Old Guard facility. Faculty. So yeah, it's just another uh, information about Melfia and their academy. Uh, and Pyromancer Glocken, who is one of the teachers there. Clear blue storing. A ring belonged to Fiorenza, the only true moneyed merchant in Volgan. <clears throat> Fiorenza used his riches to buy up trinkets of luxury and rare collectibles, but was ruined after years of excessive debauchery. So we know about Volgan. We know that it's known for its merchants and its trade. And Fiorenza was apparently the 
truly moneyed merchant of Vulcan, so the best of the best. Uh, and he had the, or she had the clear blue, blue stone ring. So we have an amber, but we also have a twilight herb, which maybe references the moon. A gray herb that grows hidden among the rocky surfaces of tall mountains restores a number of spell uses. There is no end to the scores of people who risk life and limb to forage th for this valuable herb, which led to the banning of its harvest in some regions. Again, I just love how they bring in plants and stuff into this because that is such a big part of old school, like, sorcery, Wiccan, you know, alchemy and stuff like that. So it's, it's really cool to see them bring that into the dark fantasy world and even give stories about how, like, they banned the harvesting of this rare herb, um, whatever, um... But yeah, it's nice. Simpleton Spice. A spice exuding a peculiar aroma. A spell demands devotion from its caster, but using this spice makes a chosen spell attainable with one less intelligence. Will only work with assistance from a certain person. Maybe it's Karelian. Maybe it's not. The spice does not raise one's intelligence, but only obfuscates the requirement. And he has a lot of the main sorceries. So we have... Soul arrow, great soul arrow, heavy soul arrow, great heavy soul arrow, like in the first one, and there's no lore on any of that. Shockwave. Does not inflict damage, but unleashes a large shockwave. Intended to stun uh, opponents and make them vulnerable to attack. Some call this child's play, but for an innovative caster, it's a deadly tool. So it's a way to mimic force, but with sorcery. Um, my, uh, huh. My, uh, controller just turned off. Soul Spear Barrage. So we know Soul Spears were created by Logan, and this is a barrage of them. Fires a flurry of Soul Spears. Inflict high damage when multiple spears hit. A reworking of an ancient spell con concocted at the Melfian Magic Academy. Hmm. A simple idea, but potentially highly effective when used properly. Magic weapon, we need this one too. Sorcery that imbues weapon in other hand with magic. Adds magic damage to the types of damage the weapon already inflicts. Wielding a sword and casting a sorcery are two different things, and some members of the Melfian Magic Academy view these varieties of spells as impure. So this is what I was... Okay, my... My, uh... What's going on? My uh, controller's dead. So I was talking in the first playthrough of um, that I was thinking that maybe Vanheim didn't like um, sword-based arts, but it's Melfia that I, that really is uh, uh, dislikes um, some varieties of spells that it deal with weapons. Yearn creates a warm, soul-like orb that serves as a decoy and lures foes away towards itself. People regret loss and yearn for what they do not have. Perhaps the name of this sorcery harkens to this irony. So this is a oral decoy or whatever. Alright. Let's see what he has to say. The forces of magic and souls lie dormant in this land. It is a fitting place to hone my sorceries. I suspect that I may even conjure up new spells here. Sorcery is yet a mystery, even to me. Let us mature together, young pupil. Yeah, let's do it, Karelian of the Fold. Use scrolls to unleash the power of sorceries. But the power of each scroll is reliant on that of its owner. The untrained cannot wield a scroll to its proper potential. Never forget, young pupil, there are no shortcuts to mastery. The forces of magic and soul can. One day my teachings will save you. I hope so. Okay, well now he'll go back to Firelink, or uh, Majula. 
This was originally what I thought was going to create the, uh, in the original game, there was like a path here, but there was like a load of garbage on it, and it was held up by something, and I thought that we would like move this or hit this, and it would like go brrr and lift the garbage, but it never was the, I mean, it seems such a weird thing to, uh, to, uh, to remove from the final version of the game. Like, that is so essential. It's not like, it's not like dialogue, it's not like storyline, it's like, they couldn't animate a piece of garbage moving up before the launch of the game. I should get away from here. So this, uh, yeah, this is Luca Teal. Let's do it, Luca Teal. I should have maybe killed these guys and came to summon you, but I mean, I feel confident. Ugh. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I want that. Oh my god, there's... Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just experiencing everything at once. This is a guy from, uh, from the, uh, what do you call it? The Lost Bastille. Okay, so I need Lugatil to survive a certain amount of battles. in order to complete her quest line, so I'm just thinking that even though we're right here... I, uh... I don't know if I can do this. Because the Rotten is one where it's really hard, well, at least in the original game, it's really hard for her to, to win, so I mean, I need as many as I can get, so I can get her to win three out of four. Uh, okay, well, hopefully this is not a typical thing, that she just keeps dying every time. Dark fog, we know that. Okay. Oh, but a homeward bone and it's not the same as resting. Okay. This does say, this is an interesting one, unseen path to hide. I mean, we came from hide, but it seems that people from, uh, from No Man's Wharf or from the Lost Bastille need to get to uh, Hyde's Tower of Flame, which is kind of interesting. Okay. So technically I can use this, uh, First time I've used that. I've been waiting to do that. Um, oh my god. Okay, let's go here. Really? Oh. oh my god. This is crazy for me. <clears throat> okay. Hollow infantry gloves. Can you go away so that I can court Lucatil to the uh I'm gonna kill you. Oh my god, there's that guy too. Don't hit me with that. Don't want to have you hit me with that. Okay. Look at two. 
Luca Till, Lukey. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god, stop hitting me with that, please. Okay. Come here, don't fall off the edge, please. Alright. Come on. Come on. Alright. Just, you know, go or Oh, that guy's coming. Okay, good. Lugatil, you're here. This guy's here. There's so many people here. Don't touch my Luke. Don't touch my Lugatil. Um, can we do this guy without Luke? Okay, no. Come on, get up there. Get out of here. That guy's a pyromancer, by the way. <clears throat> uh, but we'll see him fight more in the Lost Bastille. Alright, come on, Luca. Let's do this. Let's, uh, let's fight this silly boss in this ship. Alright. Who is this? Flexile Sentry. You can only attack in one direction. That's my only regret of this boss. <laughs> Like with two people, it should be able to attack in two different directions. That would be so cool. Oops. That is almost death. I just stick to this. If you uh, <clears throat> spend a long time in this boss fight, the uh, the uh, water level starts to rise higher and higher. Yeah, you can. Out Originally, it was just at my feet, but now I don't know if it continues to raise when I'm after I've beaten it, but, um, let's get out of here. Um, huh, there used to be a chest over here that was easily missed, but I guess they're like, okay, we really don't want people to miss it. But let's look at the Flexile Sentry Soul. The Flexile Sentry is a merciless creature whose purpose is to punish the undead. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, it has to do with the, you know, basically that the 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 king before uh, Vendrick, he saw the undead curse happen in his land, which was not called Drang Lake, and he rounded people up and brought them here to work as slaves. Uh, and this Flexile Sentry tortured them, is what that's trying to say. Alright, this should be the pyromancy stuff. Maybe? Possibly? Yes. So let's look at this. A flame catalyst used by pyromancers. Pyromancers rouse this flame to produce various fine arts. Fire arts. Equip pyromancy flame to produce pyromancy. The strength of pyromancy depends on the strength of one's flame. And did we get a, a spell? Yeah. A standard spell for pyromancers. To use pyromancies, equip blah blah blah. The power of a pyromancy is directly affected by the quality of the catalyst. <clears throat> so the way that dark works here they made pyromancy in Dark Souls 3. So, like, 
pyromancy needs faith and intelligence requirements as well as upgrading your pyromancy flame I believe I'm not sure we'll delve into that we have this weird sextant or sextant or whatever it's called that helps navigate or something I don't know what it is uh, but let's check it out So apparently I touched that and then I went up on deck and I was like, yeah, let's check this out. And now we're headed towards the Lost Bastille, which we can see in the distance there. We've already been to the Lost Bastille through the Pursuer fight, through the Crow, but this is the other way to get to it. Again, it's a game where you can go many different paths and go to the, you know, different places. Something that... You know, people claim this game is not open world and it's very linear and all this stuff, but I mean, you know, I think that's just, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, there's people that blindly support each and I don't want to come off as either one, but I mean, to say that this is not like an open world or that you can't make a decision where you go is just, um, <laughs> wrong. Apparently they put Grangians here, which makes a lot more sense. Um, and there's an item here that I should get. It's like, how are you going to get that item? Well, I think we can figure it out. Scimitar and Repair Powder. Small Curve Sword, the Rapid Slashing. Yes, yeah, so we read this, I think, before. And we obviously know what Repair Powder is. Alright, so let's go up properly now. Oh, we're coming up really close here. I was going to go back and do a little few things at Machula. Hopefully we have time. Or hopefully... <laughs> we will have time. Hopefully you don't mind it going over a little bit. Okay. We have a Radiant Life Gem, which we've never properly read. Uh, crystallized Souls. Dull glimmer, dull glimmer of these mysterious stones brightens with passage of time. So apparently Radiant Life Gems are just older um, older ones. Okay. Older Life Gems that crystallize better. So this is the Lost Bastille. It connects to No Man's Wharf. It's obviously related to where um, the previous king was, you know, taking undead and locking them up here. It's kind of like the Undead Asylum. Oops. A spotted fruit ter temporarily boosts poison resist. This common fruit has no taste, but when facing a true test of metal, it be its benefits could make the difference between life and death. Again, another, you know, plant that we use for our benefit, um, making the uh, lore of this area a little bit richer. So, exile holding cells. Right. All right, so we're at an hour here, so we're going to just... Um, Come back here, and we're gonna do. Bearer of the curse, less There's no Esther shard. 
So I guess we'll just pump that up just so we have a little bit more health for the next few stages. We will burn the sublime bone dust. <coughs> sublime bone dust. Oh, you read that before, and that will strengthen how much our SS class heals. I like that image of the fire going. Okay. Um, and then Carillion should be here. I like how he's like always looking behind him. He's looking at Hyde's Tower of Flame, which is technically where we found him, like Hyde's and then No Man's Orth, but I don't know if that matters. Oh, so you finally decided to join us. Let us resume our exploration of sorcery. Uh, he does have a few things to say, but no new items. The forces of magic and so No. Sorcery. Use scrolls. No, we got Never that one. Forget. I sense a dark power here. Something akin to sorcery, only more primordial. I wish to find out more about it, but as we see, this place is in ruins. Just what happened here? Hmm. <laughs> So yeah, he's talking about dark sorceries or hexes. He said they're more primordial. We learn about them in Dark Souls 1 in Ulusil as sorceries, but they're, you know, called dark whatever. Um, so he says primordial as in primordial human or prim primeval human or primordial, primordial serpents. Um, he's also talking about that the state of this land is a little bit different than that he's experienced, so he's interested in what happened here, and we will learn what happened here. Sorcery was created long, long ago. Some say it was originated by the Great Pale Being. But we've no way of knowing if such claims are true. Many sorceries were lost over the ages. Before Pyromancy, there were fire sorceries, but they are long forgotten. There's a couple things there. So, he said sorcery was created by the Pale One, that would be Seath. Um, uh, but he, it's not sure, you know, we know that there's Ulusil sorceries, we know that there's Seath sorceries, we don't know, I don't know the exact timeline whether Seath created his before Ulusil and whatever, but we know that they're different. Um, he also said that there's, there was fire sorceries before there was pyromancy, which we actually did learn from, um, Dark Souls 1 in that the fire demon sage that we fight in the demon ruins, uh, who was said to be the first demon, which is not true. Well, Miyazaki says that uh, the Isolist's son is the first demon too, so we're not sure what to believe. But anyway, it says that he knew the fire arts before Pyromancy was created. So that's potentially another reference to that, which is really interesting. Uh, but he seems to uh, possess a knowledge which is old <laughs> slash fan servicey. Um, uh, you know, so we learn more about him. We learn he's from Melfia, and Melfia probably knows a lot about it as they're the current home of sorcery and pyromancy, which in Dark Souls 1 were in different locations. On my trip here, I met a strange girl once or twice. After a time, I never saw her again. I wonder where she went off to. We spoke only a few times, but a fair lass. If a bit clumsy. I hope that she is safe. I actually don't know who he's talking about. Um, the, uh, the logically he would be probably talking about. Uh, this could be a sense of him hollowing, but uh, he could be talking about what's her name. But anyway, the 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 woman that's stone uh, over in this area, which we will unpetrify soon. Uh, which we could do now, um, or next. Uh, but she says that Karelian was her teacher in Melfia. Uh, we'll get to that. But 
I don't know if he's speaking about her and he's hollowing, or whether he's speaking about another girl and we don't meet her or we don't make the connection. I'm not sure. The forces of magic, it okay. sorcery. One day my teachings will save you. All right. So we've leveled up. We don't have much souls. Uh, we've talked to Carillion. And I believe that's it for this episode. Oh, I mean, the only other thing to do, which technically we could have done in the last episode, is that we technically have a couple stages of the of the mansion here, and we could have reloaded and had Kale come. But let's let's speak to Kale now that we've opened it up, and he can come in here. Oh, hello again. You've made it. The map, I presume. Who did that mocap? Of course. Take a good look. I mean, it's clearly not mocap. But, like, who animated that? And who is like, okay, when he's talking, he should do this? It's just embarrassing, man. Even more flames have appeared. I don't know what causes it. Yeah, and his dialogue is all out of order. I mean, I think any time a flame appears, he can say that. But there's only the one, and we didn't talk to him before it. And it's not even even more. It's the first one. So he shouldn't have said that. Did you see the flame on the map? Yeah, that I've seen. It wasn't there when I came here before. Right. Got it. I don't know what explains it. That's a dialogue that makes sense. But there is something greatly comforting about that flame. It seems to fulfill something very precious, deep within the soul. Something essential. Hmm. I would not venture far into that hole. It was blocked by a wall, something built long ago. But it was crumbling, and I finished the job. Now a foul sound echoes within. You might want to check your ears. I killed that... that skeleton. Did you see the flame? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. So yeah, he indicates that this was maybe blocked up, or there was some thing here, but he, uh... The walls were crumbling, so he kind of put up this, uh... this wood thing to hold in the crumbling uh, but he did not <laughs> he, f he did all this or at least that's what he's saying but he didn't go here and see that it was one skeleton he was with a lot of other hollows in the other place so I don't know what one skeleton would do but yeah the skeleton never responds he'd have to burn a bonfire ascetic to get them to appear again uh, and this guy doesn't say anything new yet. Oh, hello again. <sighs> yep, nothing. Oh, I well, I, I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, well, I think that's it uh, for this episode. We do have two t large titanite shards, however, I don't think we have enough. Oh, we have plenty of souls. Um, let's just use this one. Yeah. Pre prepare now. Repair is different in this game, so if you lose durability to the point where it breaks, then you can come and repair it. and. It can for a number of souls it will be back again. It's not like the first game. Okay, so we do have two Titanite shards, so yeah, I guess we're just doing fire for right now. I guess I can farm later if uh, we do find the need to upgrade other things later. So... I'll be around. Alright, um, I suppose we could level up again, too, but uh, we'll, we'll hold on to these souls for a bit. Um, thanks for watching again, and uh, we'll talk uh, in the next one. Have a good one.